Hello YouTube, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home decor, and DIY projects every single week. And for today's video, we are making some wall art with some very easy techniques. I tried my hardest to make these pieces without a lot of drawing, so these are gonna be really beginner friendly as well. And I'm really excited to show you guys some of the techniques, so let's jump into the first project. Hello from voiceover Tina. For this first project, you will need an acrylic pouring medium, and the one that I'm using today is by Liquitex, and I got mine from Amazon. You will also need some acrylic paint, and I'm just using an assortment of warm tones that I have, as well as a bottle of white paint. And for my project, I am using a basic 12 by 12 inch canvas. First, I'm going to start by mixing my acrylic paint and pouring medium inside a cup, and I like mine to be a bit more liquidy, so I'm adding just a bit more of the pouring medium than I did the paint, and I'm really gonna make sure that I mix this really, really well. This white paint that I'm mixing is going to be our base, so we will need the most amount of it. Next, I'm just going to do the same exact thing to the rest of my colors, and for this, I'm going to use a little bit less paint in a smaller cup, since my canvas is quite small, I don't need too much of it. And as you guys know, I really love warm color palettes, so that is what I'm doing for this piece. But really, you can choose any color palette that you'd like. I would just make sure that I have one darker contrasting color and then one lighter creamy color. And when you're picking your color palette, I would really suggest that you look online for some inspo pictures, and that way you can come up with the perfect color combo. Also, I want to mention that when you're doing an acrylic pour, you definitely want to prep your workspace since this gets quite messy. So I laid down some craft paper and later on you'll see that I put down an aluminum pan so then I can pour my paint into it. And now comes the fun part, I'm going to pour my white paint first and I'm just going to pour this on my canvas diagonally and then after that I'm going to pour the rest of my paints. I'm just choosing whatever colors feel right to me, there is no rhyme or reason or pattern to where I'm laying down the paint, but I'm basically going to create a line of paint right next to each other and just alternating all of the colors. And then using a palette knife, I'm going to start spreading the paint across the canvas. And this is really going to give you that layered look. Also, you'll see that I'm going to add a bit more paint to the top. And this is really just going to be my negative space. And after filling that up, I'm going to lift my canvas to move the paint across. But really, I should have done my base color first. I just got too excited and carried away. But either way, it turned out fine adding in the paint afterwards. Also, I wanted to mention here that each time I'm going in with my palette knife, I'm making sure that I wipe it down so that I get a clean spread every time. As I'm pouring more and more paint lines, I'm going to spread it and you'll see that the paint is really going to start creating little bubbles and layers, and that is all from the magic of the pouring medium. There are many techniques that you can do when you're creating an acrylic pour, but this is just one of them. And as you can see, I'm just going to repeat this process over and over with laying down the paint, spreading it, and then tilting it until the piece looks just right to me. After I get a majority of the paint down, I'm going to add in a few more drops of the pouring medium right on top of that paint. And this is really going to add more interest by spreading the paint and also just creating those cute little bubbles. And I just love the way this looks. You'll also see that I'm going to use a straw to blow the paint around, but this is totally optional. As the canvas gets more filled with paint, you can go ahead and drip it into a pan to save yourself the mess, but this is really fun just tilting the canvas back and forth and seeing what types of shapes and what types of lines that you can come up with. The best part about this technique is there really is no right or wrong way to do it since this is an abstract piece and you can really create this in whatever color palette you'd like and even add in things like metallic paint and glitter into the mix. This piece totally reminds me of Red Rocks and the desert and I love how organic it came out. It has so many cool details peeking through from the pouring medium and I also wanted to show you guys a few more that I created in a different color palette. I even added in some metallic paint, glitter, and gold paint marker to some of them. And as you can see, you really can make this into any mood and any vibe that you want it to be. It could look boho or modern or really earthy. And if you haven't tried acrylic pouring before, I would really recommend for you to try it because it's so fun to do. 
For the second project, I'm going to use tracing paper, gouache, watercolor paper, and Mod Podge. First, I'm going to create different blocks of color with my gouache paint right on top of my tracing paper. And you can totally use different types of paper for this project, like vellum or even tissue paper. But this is what I had at home, so I'm just rolling with it. And of course, you guys already know I'm using my go-to gouache color palette of ochre yellow, dusty pink, burnt sienna, rusty orange, and a dark brown. For this piece, you can really do whatever colors you want, and you can also vary in how opaque or how sheer you want the colors to be. After I painted all my blocks of color, I'm just going to let that completely dry before moving on to the next step. Now I'm using a pair of scissors, and I'm just going to start cutting out some organic shapes. You can make these shapes big or small, but I'm just going to do a few varying sizes in different circles, ovals, and blob shapes. After that, I'm going to start laying out each one of my pieces and just placing them on top of a piece of watercolor paper. You can really use whatever thick paper you have at home or even do this on a canvas. As I'm placing down each shape, I'm going to move it around, lay them on top of each other, and just try out different configurations. I even cut out my shapes even more until everything looked pretty balanced around the whole entire page. Once I was happy with that, I'm just going to use my Mod Podge to glue down each piece with a foam brush. And I put a little bit on the paper first and then just went over the entire shape. And as you're doing this, you'll notice that the paper will start to wrinkle and crease and it creates some really nice texture. And as I'm doing this, I'm making sure that the Mod Podge covers over everything. Also, I wanted to mention that I noticed that the Mod Podge did make the paint bleed off of it a little bit. So for the future, I would definitely recommend using some watered down acrylic paint to avoid this and still get the same look. After all the pieces are glued down, I'm going to make sure that I cover the whole entire page in Mod Podge and that way the finish around the whole page looks the same. Now all you need to do is to let it dry and to pop it into a frame. This collage technique really creates some awesome 3D elements to the piece and adds in a lot of texture and interest. And I really love that you can see some of the layers underneath the overlapping shapes. This technique is so simple to do and I think it came out so beautifully. All right, so this next project is super easy to do and something that everyone can do at home with their basic supplies. So I'm just going to create a quote print with some watercolor paper, watercolor and Crayola markers. First, I'm going in with my watercolor and I'm giving the paper a light wash of paint. You guys already know I'm loving the warm tones, so I'm just going to paint it a nice warm brown. After letting that dry, I'm going to add in some strokes of a darker brown color, some burnt oranges, and then I'm adding in small little white dots. And this painting is super simple using some basic techniques, but I think it gives a nice layered look. So here you can see that I'm using a nice warmer pinky color and you can really have some fun with the background and just make it in whatever colors you'd like. I love mixing my media. So on top of the watercolor, I'm using a white colored pencil and here I'm just adding some wavy lines and I think it adds a lot of interest as well as give it a nice graphic look. After that's all dry, I'm going to use my Crayola marker to write down a quote. And here I am using my super tips and just a black marker, but you can really use any color for this. And for my quote, I'm going with something very simple. It's a phrase that I always say at the end of my videos, which is stay inspired. Now I'm going to take a small fine liner brush and dip it into water. And all you really need to do is to go over the marker with a brush and it instantly looks like you wrote the phrase in watercolor. And the water really helps push the marker ink around and gives it a nice gradient look. I love this little trick, especially if you're not yet comfortable with using brushes for writing with watercolor. And using this hack really gives you the control of a marker with the look of watercolor paints. After letting this dry, I'm going to pop it into a frame and it totally looks like a store-bought piece. My little print came out so cute. It's simple and graphic and matches my vibe perfectly. I also created a few other pieces using this technique, including a simple black and white one that's perfect for the bedroom, and then even a card with some cardstock paper. I hope this project inspires you guys to try out this little trick because I'm sure all of you have some Crayola markers at home and you can totally elevate all of your projects with just a paintbrush and some water. 
All right, guys, so those were all the projects for today's video. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have tried any of these techniques or if you're planning to try them. And also let me know in the comments if there are new techniques that you would like me to try out. And that way I can learn some new ones because I'm always looking to do some new projects. So I would really appreciate that if you put that down in the comments down below. Also, if you're watching this on the day that it goes live, I am actually moving, which is so crazy. I am like, pretty stressed out right now because as you can see in my background, I don't have anything packed in this room specifically. So that's what I'm doing right after this video. If you would like to follow along my week long road trip to LA, go ahead and give me a follow on Instagram. I'm going to be posting everything on stories and I'm also going to be coming out with a moving vlog. So watch out for those coming up soon. I am so excited to be in a new space and I will for sure be having a whole apartment makeover series. So if you aren't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe down below so that you don't miss my videos in the future. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. That really helps out my channel so much. And that is it for today's video. Stay inspired, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.